Hello, I'm Lyndon, or Tweaklab, and yeah, I was the composer for the Golden Era documentary. Um, and yeah, I thought it could be fun to show you a few things about how I composed the score and what some of the influences were and inspirations, um, things outside of our beloved GoldenEye. Uh, so what I've got loaded up at the moment is the Golden Era intro, uh, which actually became a bit of a theme and a motif that we used throughout the documentary. And it was actually one of the first things I decided would be a, a good idea early into getting hired to do this gig and to do this score, um, because I just knew there'd be a lot of moments through the documentary where the obvious choice would be to go to the James Bond theme, uh, which we had no license for. So I'm like, well, what if the documentary had its own theme that was just a typical sort of spy theme, like what makes the James Bond theme James Bond theme? Same with, you know, Mission Impossible, and there's a lot of iconic sort of spy themes that if I can make my own, then the rest of the process should be a bit easier. Um, so yeah, I actually came up with the main sort of riff, if you will, by restricting myself to using the same three notes um, that the main riff out of the James Bond theme uses. For those that play guitar, you know, 023 <laughs> on the low E string. And so I just picked up a guitar, started jamming around with that, and I came up with this. So that's a good example of a more traditional bond tone. Uh, so the next one we're going to take a look at is Debunked, um, which it was actually my bunker remix for GoldenEye Source 5.0. And it's a good example of how we were able to sort of inject the golden era theme in place of the traditional James Bond theme to keep everything happy. Um, and yeah, it actually works quite well in the documentary because it's, you know, the background music for GoldenEye Source while it's being talked about by the interviewees. Uh, we even get to see, you know, Curtis Higgins, uh, one of the co-founders of GoldenEye Source, um, talking about the project. So. It was cool um, to be able to use an actual GoldenEye source track, but just change it enough that, you know, <laughs> everybody's happy and there's no lawsuits coming our way. So I believe around here, See, it still captures that feeling of James Bond, but... It's still just, you know, in our own little spy universe, so... <laughs> if ever there was a song that I was put through the ringer to produce and hand over, this was the one. 
and you'll probably hopefully hear why. So I've got it queued up to a, a one of my favourite spots. Um, bit of funky wah wah guitar, and uh, you'll be able to tell pretty quickly which um, '90s artists it was inspired by. <laughs> Yeah, um, so here's one of my favourite little moments. Just typical of the 90s, big beat, you name it. Um, just some good old fashioned uh, filter effects, flange effects over the drum beat. Now this next one is a strong contender for my favourite track from the documentary in the sense of I think it just absolutely nailed uh, the source material, um, the vibe, what we were going for and I mean the song is called Hangry Kong's Pantry so I'll leave it to you to figure out which game this is a love letter to. So this was one where, again, we sort of stripped it back to basics, you know, what's one element, what's one sound that um, makes Donkey Kong Country Donkey Kong Country as far as the music's concerned. And, you know, with little hesitation, bongo drums, congas, that sort of thing. And the other part I said on top of being, you know, bongos and congas and everything else is a swingy jazz, you know, upright bass, that sort of vibe. Um, so then we, I did some drums, which sort of mirror the Congo loop. And like, as long as you can see, um, you know, Cranky Kong <laughs> to the beat, like, we've got it, you know? And so this little, I, I added this as an extra layer just to sort of bring it all home. Um, I thought it sounded a lot like, you know, rare, characters when they speak. And it just sort of brings that final sort of climax home. Like it's subtle, but it, but it is in there. So it wouldn't be fair to make a documentary about a first-person shooter game without mentioning Doom. So I was really excited to have an excuse to make a sort of Doom E1, M1 kind of tribute. And yeah, just using that same sort of mindset, you know, what's one element that makes the Doom music Doom? And I thought, well, 80s, 90s thrash metal. <laughs> so I picked up my seven string guitar. I didn't go quite as hardcore as a eight or a nine, but, um, double tracked so let's hear one at a time and yeah at the intro there there is a sneaky little shotgun uh, which is actually from Goldeneye Source and I brought it in a little bit of reverb over it and then I fed it through a Scream 4 distortion or destruction unit um, digital just dialed in the sweet spot to give it that crunchy sort of 16-bit sort of sound. And yeah, it just really kicks it into the track nicely.
So essentially that is how you make a documentary score. Or at least it's how I made one and whether I get to make another one will be, have to be determined after that. But um, it was nothing short of an honour and a privilege to be a part of Golden Era and helping, you know, bring the music element to the table and just getting to throw back to the music and the video games I grew up with and they're still part of my day-to-day -day life as we speak now. Never forget it, an amazing opportunity, amazing experience and um, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this, wherever you're watching it. Um, and again, I'm, I'm Linden, or Tweak Lab as my music goes by. And you know, you can find out more. There's uh, tweaklab.net, or all my releases are available on your platform of choice. So, yeah, thanks for hanging out, and see you later.